morning. What a glorious day it is to be gathering for worship. As we begin worship this morning, I would like to welcome you. I'm Pastor Maria Campbell, and on behalf of the people of Heritage United Methodist Church, I welcome you to gather and to glorify God on this beautiful day. If you are worshiping with us for the very first time, I'm going to invite you to go online to our website and to let us know that you are worshiping with us for the first time. When you do that, we make a special donation in your honor to Harvester's Food Pantry. And that helps our community and um, also lets us know that you have gathered with us in this wonderful experience. And if you worship with us each and every Sunday, we are delighted and know that um, you are doing so to join us in community and join us in the worship of God and most especially encourage our spirits by gathering with us. Now, I'm going to step aside for a moment and uh, remind you of our communion table. Many of you may refer to it as our altar. Um, you'll notice that on the communion table we have a candle that's lit, um, a cross, and our Bible. And I'm going to invite you in the weeks to come to make, and we do this, um, it's a little hard to notice, but our candle is lit. For those of you who have worshipped with us in the past, um, you will remember that we have an acolyte or someone who lights the candle in advance of the start of worship and that's to prepare us for the beginning of worship. And we say that it brings Christ's light into um, the, the sanctuary, and then at the end of service, um, when we blow out the candle, we carry Christ's light back out into the world and, and remind ourselves that we are to carry out the light of Christ into the world to continue doing God's work. So I'm going to ask you, um, into the weeks to come, if you would be thinking in advance of when you um, prepare yourself to sit down to worship, if you would think of finding a candle, or even if it's a battery-powered candle, um, and just find yourself a place or the family a place where you could sit and prepare yourself for an opportunity to be in God's presence and maybe make it a, a little bit of a quiet time or a more peaceful time or maybe just a different time in the middle of your day or night whenever you choose to worship. Um, many of us worship, still worship at, um, in the morning. Um, we will begin a pretty set time of 9.30 um, as we enter the rest of this year. But what I would like to encourage you to do is let this be a set apart for God time, to a time to refresh your spirit, to refresh your mind, and to fully embrace the wonder, the majesty, the power of God's presence. And with that, I invite you to listen as our liturgist invites us to a call to worship. Good morning. Take this off. My name is Doug Grossenbacher. I have the pleasure of serving as your financial chair here at Heritage United Methodist Church. Before we begin this morning, I just wanted to take a quick moment as the financial chair to reiterate a lot of what Pastor Maria has said over the past few weeks. As a congregation, as a church, financially we're doing well. And that is largely due to the fact that you all have been so generous and great in your giving thank you so much for that and we just we praise god for you all being generous during these difficult times and continuing to support the church so that we can support our ministries our community etc so thank you so much for your continued giving and now if you will join me for our morning prayer god we await the change you have in store for us. We welcome your guidance and wisdom. Draw us close to you and dwell within us. Help us to be all you would desire us to become. In the name of Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, now and always, amen.
am so glad that we're together. It's been a really interesting several days at our house. In fact, for those of you who can read, you'll know that it's been so interesting. Pastor Maria even got a little bit confused a couple of minutes ago. And you can tell that I said that we were going to do one thing when we were supposed to do something else. That's how interesting it's been at our house. And you'll even notice, and it's kind of sad, that Squirrel and, and Bunny aren't here. They just needed to take a nap. They were really having too much fun. We're just going to take a really deep breath. And, and sometimes moms and dads have to do that. We take a deep breath and we go, oh, okay, it's going to be better in a little while. Well, Mike and Camel have had some behavior issues this week. I'm sad to share that with you. Now, we know that Mike has a special heart for, for Monkey, and we know that Mike tries to be a good role model for Monkey because, you know, Monkey really wants to grow up to be just like his big brother and, and to do the right thing. And when he, when he does, he's going to get to be able to ride his bicycle on his own. He's got a while to go. You've got to quit jumping on the bed and falling off before Mama's going to think that you're safe riding your bike on your own. But we, that's another story for another day. Now, we know that Camel also has a special heart for, for a little sis because little sis... I mean, everybody's got to take care of little sis, but Camel does so most of the time with a good spirit. This was not a good week. I am so sad to share that with you. And you know what's really interesting? It was happening, some of this was happening right when Mama was reading her Bible. And, and I was reading, I was reading from the letter that Paul was reading to the church in Rome, because he was trying to get the people to, do, to be nice to one another. That's all he was doing. And he was saying, you know, that you really need to love one another, and you have to be honest about it. You have to do it with a good heart. You know, don't pretend to love your little brother and say the right things. You need to treat him nicely. And don't act like your little sister is special in your heart. And then <clears throat> push her off the couch. Okay. So we've just had all sorts of things come up at our house. So I came up with house rules. House rule number one. Do no harm. That means we have to make sure that we do not hurt one another. Can't push anybody off the couch because they might hurt themselves or, 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 you know, something bad could happen. And also, we have to make sure not only not to hurt our little brothers and sisters' bodies, but we don't want to hurt their feelings because that, that makes them sad and then they would cry. Well, also, house rule number two I bet you your moms and your dads might be listening. If they're not, you could invite them in. It's okay. If you want private time, it's okay. They might, they might listen to this later. But anyway, the, the second rule is do good. That's a pretty good rule. And, and Mike and I, my buddy, Mike, I said, Mike, you know, words are great. Actions are better. So you can say, I love my little monkey brother. That's great. That makes Mama's heart kind of happy. What Mama really loves is when, when, when Monkey is kind of sitting all sad and all by himself because none of his friends have been able to come out to play. Wouldn't it be cool if Big Brother like said, hey, you want to play a game? And then they get to have some fun together. That's how you show your love for your little brother. That's doing good. And maybe even help him make his bed because I'm telling you, with all that jumping, beds could get to be quite the mess. And then, see how sweet, you know, here's the thing with Camel. 
who could look sweeter than camel, right? Everybody says, oh, camel's such a sweetheart. Camel would never do anything wrong. Hmm. Yeah. Well, every once in a while, camel forgets to do good. And, and then little sis starts to cry. And, and recently, camels, I think it's probably, this might be happening at your house been a long time since you guys have been in school and and like your schedules are kind of messed up and you're still not exactly sure what's going to happen about getting back to school if you live right around church and so you know people are getting a little cranky a little fussy and and maybe like a little pokey at their baby sisters and brothers and and camel camel hid little sis's toy her favorite one and and there was a lot of crying at our house now that breaks house rule number two that is not doing good so we had a big conversation about that now number three is a very positive one and i want us to think the most about it uh, but we also have to do the other two it says be loving do all the things that you can do for your sisters and your brothers and your moms and your dads and your aunts and uncles and grandmas and grandpas and your neighbors that show them that you love them. And each person, it's going to be different. You know, maybe Mike, maybe Mike could think, wow, maybe Monkey really needs to see what it looks like when a big brother helps them clean up their room when things have gotten out of hand. Mama says, straighten up your room, monkey. And monkey goes, I don't know what to do. And a big brother might be able to give a word of encouragement and, 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 and to maybe even help a little bit. And, and then, you know, that's a pretty loving thing to do. That's showing love in action. And mama would be so proud. And then for Camel, we could think about all the ways that we can show little sis that we love her just sometimes just by snuggling with her. You know, little sis doesn't take a lot, but sometimes she gets scared when she's all by herself. I think sometimes, does that ever happen to you? Sometimes when we've been kind of by ourselves for a while because everybody in the house is busy, and, and, you know, mama's got something to do and dad's got something to do and big sis has got something to do and brother and, and everybody's off doing their own thing and all of a sudden we look around and it's just us. And, and we don't know what to do. You know, sometimes that's when we get in a little trouble and, and, and you know, little sis, bless her heart, sometimes that's when she gets a little fussy. She's not really big enough to get in, in, into trouble, but she gets fussy. And, and that would be just the perfect time for the one who loves her so much, Camel, to come over and just sit by her and maybe tell her a little story about maybe even the day she was born about how exciting it was when, when we found out we were going to have a little sis and, and we were all so excited that, that she was coming into our lives and, and we just held her and hugged her and took good care of her. Because we showed the people that we love them with our actions. I mean, it's nice to say it, but it's super important to show it. And at this time, when lots of people are, you know, getting a little cranky because it's been so long since we've gotten to do some things we want to do, house rules are kind of important. Some people even talk about these as the, the three rules of the church, you know, and, and they say them a little different. It says, do no harm, do good, and stay in love with God. There's, it's almost exactly like our house rules. The most important thing to do is to remember to love one another as God loves it, as God loves you. So I think that we do that a lot around here. You want to pray? Okay, I'm ready. Today I'm going to close my eyes. You can do whatever you want. Eyes open, eyes closed. Dear God, you are so awesome. I love it that each and every time we get together, you just... You just remind us that it, it's all about loving you and loving each other. And you're always finding these new ways for us to, to remember it in a, in a new way so that 
it helps us understand it more and, and, and build it more into not only our minds, but into our hearts and into our very lives. Because God, what we want most is to make you happy because you have made our lives so happy. Thanks for sending Jesus. Thanks for showing the way and for making him be the light. It's in his name we pray. Amen. See you next week. Can't wait. And now I'm going to read our first scripture this morning, which comes from Romans 12, 9 through 21. Let love be genuine. Hate what is evil. Hold fast to what is good. Love one another with mutual affection. Outdo one another in showing honor. Do not lag in zeal. Be ardent in spirit. Serve the Lord. Rejoice in hope. Be patient in suffering. Preserve, pres, persevere in prayer. Contribute to the needs of the saints. Extend hospitality to strangers. Bless those who, who persecute you. Bless and do not curse them. Rejoice in those who rejoice. Weep with those who weep. Live in harmony with one another. Do not be haughty, but associate with the lowly. Do not claim to be wiser than you are. Do not repay anyone evil for evil, but take thought for what is noble in the sight of all. If it is possible, so far as it depends on you, live peaceably with all. Beloved, never avenge yourselves, but leave room for the wrath of God. For it is written, vengeance is mine. I will repay, says the Lord. No, if your enemies are hungry, feed them. If they are thirsty, give them something to drink. For by doing this, you will heap burning coals on their heads. Do not be overcome by evil, but overcome evil with good. to God, but our listening to God. We come into God's presence knowing that God is a God who not only is able to do what God desires, but God is a God who listens to God's people and understands our heartfelt desires. And so we come knowing that um, this is a week in which there are people that we love who need prayer, people that we love who need healing. And we ask for the God who is able to be part of what they need most. So I would 
at this time ask you to quiet your thoughts and to center your hearts on God. Amazing God, we humbly ask you to be with us this day. We have failed to be faithful to you. You have told us to love as we are loved, but we judge others before we take the time to listen. At times we are so certain that we are right that we blame others before we try to understand. In these difficult and challenging times, our lives have turned upside down and we feel confused and unsettled. We confess, O oh God, that we do not always turn to you when we are frustrated. Fear and anger grab hold of us. Merciful one, please forgive us. Slow us down and pour your calming peace into every fiber of our being. Give us hearts overflowing with grace and compassion. Help us to follow Jesus and to love others who were rejected by society. Remind us that we are called to be the voices of hope for all who feel alienated and lost. We are called to be a home to strangers. We are called to quench the thirst of those who are parched. We are called to give nourishment to every one of your beloved people. We are called to bring words of hope. These are the crosses that you call us to pick up and to carry them each and every day. Lord, we know that um, each one of us have people on our hearts and on our minds at this time. So we humbly ask that you hear us as we lift these persons and our concerns to you silently. trusting that you were already at work at each one of these persons' lives, trusting that the healing is already in progress and that you were at work long before we asked. We speak the words that Jesus taught. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil for thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever amen <laughs>
for us to share in a word from the Lord, and I invite you to take out your Bible or use whatever means you have to read along with me. And if you are one of those who prefers to listen to God's word, please do so. But I invite you into this time of being present to the word that God is offering to us this day. I'm reading to you from Matthew chapter 16, beginning with verse 21. From that time on, Jesus began to show his disciples that he must go to Jerusalem and undergo great suffering at the hands of the elders and chief priests and scribes and be killed and on the third day be raised. And Peter took him aside and began to rebuke him, saying, God forbid it, Lord, this must never happen to you. But he turned and said to Peter, Get behind me, Satan. You are a stumbling block to me, for you are setting your mind not on divine things, but on human things. And then Jesus told his disciples, If any want to become my followers, let them deny themselves and take up their cross and follow me. For those who want to save their life will lose it, and those who lose their life for my sake will find it. For what will it profit them if they gain the whole world but forfeit their life? Or what will they give in return for their life? For the Son of Man is to come with his angels in the glory of his Father, and then he will repay everyone for what has been done. Truly, I tell you, there are some standing here who will not taste death before they see the Son of Man coming in his kingdom. May God add revelation and understanding to our hearing of the Holy Word. Please pray with me. God, we have come. We come with expectation. We come with hope. We come just desiring to hear a word from you. God, we trust in you. <laughs> we trust in you. We come because we believe you will tell us, maybe not in the same kind of words that people are hearing my voice in, but we will hear your word. We so believe in you, Lord, that we keep coming because we want to hear what you would have us know. God, we're coming because we believe in you. So give us ears to hear, minds to understand, and wills that we might be transformed by you. And let the meditations of each and every one of our hearts and the words from my lips be acceptable to you, my rock and my redeemer. Amen. Hold on. <laughs> Hold on. When you hear those words, hold on, what pictures come to your mind? The first image that comes to mind is my daddy carrying me when I'm a little girl, and it's pouring down rain, pouring, pouring, pouring down rain. And it's dark, it's nighttime, we're in Brooklyn, and we're leaving Grandma's house, and Grandma lives two blocks away, so no sense of getting the car out. And so we're, Daddy's carrying me home, and it's pouring down rain, and he says, Maria, hold on, hold on tight. And we walk home. I held on tight. Hold on, hold on. A time when you hold on so tight because you believe that it's going to be all right, when everything around you is saying that nothing, nothing is going right, everything in your world indicates that everything is crashing, but you hold on because you believe that it's going to work out despite all indications, you hold on. Hold on. You haven't seen your cousin you can't even remember the last time. Talk about the, the black sheep of the family. She's come home. 
and you throw your arms around her and you hold on so tight, it feels so good just to hold on. It is priceless to hold on. And then there's that time when you hold on and you're holding on so tight because it's the last time because you're holding on because it's soon to be someone's last breath and you think it might even almost be yours and you're about to say goodbye forever until you see them on the other side you hold on. And we hold on today to the words from last week. We hold on to that marvelous moment where Peter proclaims loudly and proudly, you are the Messiah, the Son of the living God. We hold on to that moment because Peter got it right and Jesus said, yes, Peter, you got it right. Woohoo! We're so excited. We can't believe it. Our buddy Peter got it right. His friends all around him, he got it right. It's so amazing. Your heart's beating as fast as his must have been because it was just awesome. And now it's verse 21. Hold on, hold on indeed from that time on. From that time on. From that time on. Just a short while later. From that time on, Jesus told them that he would suffer and he would die and he would rise. And Peter said, <laughs> no, don't say that. Who? Peter's thinking, he's supposed to be the Messiah. The Messiah is supposed to be the one who comes and saves us. The Messiah is supposed to be the one who comes and takes care of us. Everything's supposed to be cool. He's not supposed to be saying that he's going to suffer and die. What's this Messiah business if he's going to suffer and die? He can't say that. Everybody will leave. They won't follow us anymore. Jesus is thinking, this is Peter. I just said he's going to be the one upon whom I built my church, the foundation. He's going to be the solid ground. He's the one that God the Father, my Father, revealed this very special information to. And he's acting like an ordinary human. What is going on here? And Jesus says, get behind me, Satan. Has the devil gotten into Peter? Jesus doesn't know what's going on. This is certainly not Jesus' intention for the person who's going to build the church. Jesus is thinking, I'm going to have this solid leader. You know, when you, when you choose your church council chair or your lay leader or the guy who's going to be like, or the woman who's going to be leading things up, you're expecting rock solid. You're expecting the one who's not going to have any question. You're expecting the, the, the stand-up person who's going to just be dependable. And Peter's thinking, I just called him the son of the living God, and he's telling me he's going to suffer and die. And then Jesus doesn't kick him out. Jesus doesn't say, okay, number two, James or John, what you doing? No. He goes on 
to talk to his followers and said, I, I need to talk to you about what this is all about. Because what this is all about, apparently, um, is not what you thought this was all about. Um, what this is about is some really serious stuff. You followed me. Great. I'm really excited. Um, and it's a good idea because I am the Messiah, so, you know, cool that you did that. But um, it's going to take something. Now, we remember last week, you know, Paul was really straightforward about this. Paul said, and, you know, I said it wouldn't make a good T-shirt slogan, and I, I'm still standing by that statement. Um, a living, you know, you were to be a holy and living sacrifice. You know, not a whole lot of people want to walk around with a T-shirt that says, I'm a living sacrifice. Um, but, but the reality of it is, is that we are called to give our whole selves to God. That we understand that when we say we're going to we're gonna be committed followers of Jesus Christ, what we're saying is we're going to give God our whole self, mind, body, and spirit. We're going to give it all to God. We're going to let God just change our lives, transform us, and then we're going to follow Jesus. And God's going to help us. That's the good news because God knows we can't do it by ourselves. And God's going to give us, you know, uh, spiritual gifts and talents and so that we're going to be able to do the work of the church. And, and it's going to be great. I except for this little thing that comes back to us in Matthew. And, and Jesus says, see, it's not so simple. I mean, it's not really hard, but it's not... It's not so simple. Because if you're going to follow me, you've got to let it all go. And, and these people that are following him say, wow. You know, when Peter was messing up and Peter says the wrong thing, we could look at Peter and go, <laughs> he did it again. He stuck his foot in his mouth. It's really easy to laugh at your buddy when your buddy sticks his foot in his mouth because you go, well, I wouldn't say that. And now it's you. Jesus says, and I quote, for those who want to save their life will lose it, and those who lose their life for my sake will find it. Huh. But you have to deny yourself and take up their cross and follow me. See, they had already left their jobs. They had already left their homes. Many of them had walked away from their families. Probably some of them had walked away from their girlfriends. Some of them had even kind of left their wives and kids um, periodically visited, but, you know, weren't hanging out at home with them anymore. And so they thought they had pretty much done all those kind of major things that you can do. And, and I agree. That's pretty big stuff when you walk away from your life. And, you know, some of them... Probably their families weren't feeling warm and fuzzy about that. Might have even considered disowning them. And, and now Jesus is saying, but like if you're really going to follow me, you put it all down, put it all down. And then you pick up those things that are hard and you follow me. And they're thinking to themselves, wow, am I ready to do this? Can I do this? You're sitting wherever you are, and you're saying, am I ready to do this? How do I do this? Am I doing this? <laughs> Is that what I said when I got confirmed? Did anybody ever ask me that? How, how does the church organize itself to let the church, which is us, know how it is we're supposed to live? And Paul, you know, Paul's, Paul's really working it. He wants the church to know there is a way to be the church. 
There is a way for us to act as sisters and brothers in Christ and to live in community with one another and to be supportive and loving and kind. And this is the way to do it. We can be accountable to one another. We can live in community and we can just gather around each other and be nice. And so this is what he's talking about in this, this wonderful passage that in some, some um, versions of the Bible is listed under marks of a true Christian. And the first verse is, let love be genuine and hate evil. And you know, a lot of what we talk about as followers of Jesus is, you know, the things that we have to do for God. We have to go out and we have to take care of our neighbor and we have to love others as God loves us. And, but the first thing we have to do is an inside job. We got to clean house first. You know, I was talking with the kids about house rules because we got to have house rules. We got to be able to get our house in order. And for us adults, <laughs> the first house we got to get in order is us. We have to make sure that we are really loving others from the inside. We got to clean up this house. And we have to hate what is evil. And so how do we really show others that we love others, um, really love others, and let that be genuine? And so I, 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 I sat around and I, I played with this for a long time, and, and I don't know why this, you know, this was on my heart, probably because the lawnmowers were going. But I thought, you know, sometimes I've, I've had some really fun neighbors through the years. Keith and I have lived in lots of cities and states and, and, in, and in different locales. And I've had some interesting neighbors who had a lot of judgment issues and would talk about those neighbors who didn't have perfect lawns. And, and I thought, well, what if it, instead of all of those comments that, that were made by them, what if one morning they got up and mowed the neighbor's lawn? Wow, wouldn't that be a way to show love for someone else? Because, you know, we don't really ever know why the person doesn't mow their lawn. We don't know if maybe, you know, they have some arthritis issues or maybe they just, you know, just have back issues. We, we literally don't know. And instead of judging that person for not keeping the perfectly manicured lawn, maybe surprise them with an act of kindness. Then I thought about the hard one, hating evil. And we, we've been confronted with a lot of evil um, with the racism that's gone on in our country of late. Not that it is new, but um, that it's, we've actually been confronting it. And, and I thought to myself, you know, like what if we get real? What if like the next time, you know, because a lot of people say, you know, I hate it. You know, I, I, I hate when people are racist racist, and, and I don't like when people do those things. You know, what if the next time you're in the presence of some people and, and they tell a racist joke, you don't laugh? Because, you know, I know we laugh because we're uncomfortable, and, and we don't know what to do, and, and we don't want to be the weirdo who doesn't laugh, and we don't, we don't know how to not laugh and just be there. And, and then what if we drum up the courage to say, that's not a funny joke, that's not a joke. What if we hate evil? And what if we don't lack in zeal? You know, um, these are hard times. And um, they were hard as soon as COVID hit. And everybody got busy <laughs> making masks, and I love that. And, and our faith community did an awesome job. And, and we have been busy, 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 busy doing all sorts of things for the community around us. Um, and I don't want to be a Debbie Downer, but um, this isn't over. And um, there's more things that we can do for our community. Let's not forget that the pandemic is still happening. And let's make sure that we keep up our enthusiasm for caring for our neighbor and making sure they have what they need. You know, I may not keep saying every single Sunday, don't forget Fran, 
your friends, your relatives, and your neighbors. They need to hear from you. I have spoken to more people who are suffering from depression in the past four months than I did in many years of ministry, just in four months. People are hurting. We need to speak to them, care for them, make sure that if they're not connected with people that can help them, that we get them connected. But the first thing we could do is reach out. We need to contribute to the needs of the saints and extend hospitality to strangers. We need to make sure that God knows that we love one another with our whole being. That we haven't forgotten what God has called us to do. And Matthew is exactly right. You know, when, when Matthew says, for what will it profit them if they gain the whole world but forfeit their lives? We forfeit our lives if we don't give our lives away to help others live as joyously as we live. Because it's all about moving on to perfection, spending our eternity with God. That's where we're going. I know that your hearts are big. I know that you seek every day to strive to be the kind of people that God desires you to be. I just invite you to keep seeking, striving, and inviting others to join you in your journey. May we all have house rules. Do no harm. Do good. Stay in love with God. May all the glory be to God. Amen. As you continue to be good stewards of all the resources that God has given you, I just want to thank you for your generosity. Thank you for your ability to keep giving in all the ways you give, not just of your financial resources, but of your time and your talents. Thank you for being faithful. Thank you for worshiping. And thank you for being creative in ways that you can continue to give. Amen.
powerful God, you are Lord of all. We bring our tithes and offerings in gratitude for all we have received. Multiply them and use them for the good of your creation. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Now join us in our closing hymn, They'll Know We Are Christians By Our Love. affiliation is. They should know we are Christians by the way we treat them, by the way we act. It is my hope and my prayer that you go into this week and people know you are a follower of Jesus Christ by your love. Go forth in grace and peace. Amen. <laughs>